Welcome back to the OK Kite Boarder, and believe it or not, in today's episode, we are actually going to talk about kiteboarding. A recent trip to Corpus Christi, Texas allowed me the opportunity to interview Vadim with Green Hat about things to consider when training your kids to kiteboard. One thing is certain, if your kids aren't all about it, then don't force it. I have a great couple boys, but their current wind sport interest, well, it's about here. So we will not be entering this journey anytime soon. But a big thanks to Jeff Howard, owner of Kiteboarding.com, for his hospitality, expertise, innovation, and his infectious energy in welcoming the Green Hat crew to his home turf. He is a true ambassador for the wind sports industry, and his local riding spots, well, they're some of my favorite to date. Now let's get to it. You want to train your kids to kite? Here's things to consider. If you're considering teaching your kids how to kiteboard, here are the few things you need to uh, take into the account. Number one is, is motivation. Different things motivate different kids. Personally, I found that just exposing them to the sport and in general wind sports early on is helps a lot taking them out to the beach to have good role models uh, on the beach guys that are you know making it look good <laughs> and, and at the same time good with kids um, maybe other kids that are a little bit older that are kiting on your beach that's a, that's always a great motivator location is the key has to be as safe as possible. So shallow water, uh, steady winds, no crowds, no obstacles of any kind. There aren't all that many places like this and it's important to find something like that near you or go on vacation um, to one of those spots. Some of the spots that I can think of are, you know, the famous ones are the uh, Outer Banks, Hatteras in North Carolina. There's South Padre in, in South Texas, uh, the Keys, uh, can offer some nice flat water and steady winds uh, in certain spots. The spot that I taught my kids is um, Barnegat Bay in New Jersey. Um, there's a little place called Kite Island. You do have to take a boat out there, um, but it, it's, it's a perfect place to learn. It's need to waste deep water for mild steady winds. That's what you're looking for for something like this. As far as Actually taking them, putting them on a kite, I, I found it to be important to have small intervals. Uh, just a little bit, you know, of a training kite at first. See if they're excited about it. If they're not, just put it down. Uh, start again next time. Uh, it, it, it just, if you're doing something against their will, I found it not to work. Uh, so that's just my experience with my kids. Uh, just a little bit at a time. If they're having fun, let them have fun with it. If they're not, try another day. And it could be very frustrating. It could take a lot of time. Uh, you, you're taking your own time away from, from kiting, from, from enjoying it, but it is just an investment into the future, um, which is totally worth it in the end. Professional instructors, if you don't have experience teaching, uh, professional instructions are, are, are very important in my opinion uh, but you have to find the right coach uh, coaching adults and coaching kids is, is is quite different and there's a lot of a lot less attention span uh, for the kids and you know the younger they are the, the less attention span clearly um, also you know different kids are, are have different levels of maturity so that, that that's quite important you want to find a coach that has experience uh, with kids you, you want to uh, have lessons that are not full day lessons. I think that's the key. Uh, they can only take so much. After a while, they just get exhausted, they get overwhelmed, and it, it's just too much for them to handle. There's too many things going on uh, from what I found. And again, every, every kid is different. Um, I have two of them that I taught how to kite since they were eight years old. Um, and the experience was very different from one to the other. You just have to kind of learn with them and see what works, what works for them, what tricks work for them. The, the general 
kind of structure is the same, make sure they're motivated, make sure that um, you know you keep their interest up, make sure to, to keep to, to, to stop when they're when, when they're frustrated. Wait until it does. Uh, wait until you can, because uh, there's a lot of risk involved as well. And um, if these things don't line up, uh, I'm not sure if the risk is, is really worth it. You know, it's it's you have to kind of wait until they become a little older, and a little more mature, to be able to handle deeper water, to be able to handle uh, more of a longer lessons. Uh, to be able to handle non-perfect conditions. There, there's, a, there's a concept, and this is in, in general in any kind of instructions, um, uh, but this is especially true when teaching kids, is about the, the comfort level and it's about keeping balance between being comfortable and progressing. And when kids are timid or anybody else for that matter you have to it's very important to encourage them as much as possible and tell them they're doing a good job and pushing them forward um, on the other hand if they're too comfortable and they're taking too many risks it's it's kind of important to to scare them a little bit to to push them in the other direction just to make sure they don't get hurt the, the hardest thing that I found in teaching kids when, when they were really young is, is their weight. And what happens is the moment you have a kite that's small enough for them not to be overpowered, it, it usually just starts falling out of the sky because it's too light of a wind for it. Um, so I taught my kids they were maybe 60 pounds, 55, 60 pounds. Um, it was really hard to find a kite and the right conditions so that it's not pulling them too much. And at the same time, it's staying up in the sky. Um, I, I found that kites with lesser, the lighter kites do a lot better. Um, like kites that, uh, that have maybe one strut or with these new uh, technologies now like the SLS uh, or the Alula new materials that are a lot lighter, they'll stay up in the sky in lighter winds. Um, like a, a good inflatable kite that's good for foiling will also be good for teaching younger kids because you, you need a, a much lower uh, wind range to be able to, to hold that kite up in the sky. I think it's, it's really important for the kids to be able to control a train a kite before um, they have actual power in them. They can have a lot of fun with a trainer kite too. Make sure that they can fly it. You can take them to a, a non-crowded beach, have them fly it for as long as they're having fun. And it's really, really easy to, to, because we organize things. We, we, we put this whole day together to go out and do things. And then we have a vision of them accomplishing certain things, but the, the reality is completely different. In, in reality, they, you know, they, they get hungry, they get tired, they get cranky. So it may only be 20 minutes that they'll have fun, uh, or it may be two hours. And it's always very tricky to balance our own ambitions um, with their needs. And I personally did not put them on the on a big kite until. I saw from them that they could fly the trainer kite with one hand not looking at it without crashing. And that was something that I used as a motivator for them to fly the trainer kite. Look, you, you're going to be, when you can do this, you'll be ready for the big boy kite. You know, when, when you can do this, when you can do that, you're going to step it up. You can do what all these other people are doing on the beach. For boards, in general, my opinion on the boards is to have as big of a board as possible with the smallest, smallest kite that that will fly. That doesn't make them overpowered. So, you know, if they're short, you want to keep the, the bindings closer together. 
um, that's an important part because it'll be very hard for them with the uh, with the binding spread far, uh, wide the tandem boards are awesome uh, and just again another motivational thing is if you if you can ride with them tandem um, and connect the harnesses together where they can actually like my kids have been doing it since they were maybe five or six I would connect the harness together they would stand in front of me the chicken loop would actually be connected to their harness and they could control the bar um, I would sometimes like I would control with them once they got once they felt comfortable I would only hold their their uh, elbows and control the bar with the, with their elbows and then I would fully let go it's all a matter of progression. The, the, the real key here is slow and steady progression. Yeah, I, I, my progression is definitely uh, stalled significantly, and um, yeah, I, you know. But that, that's lately I, I, I've been getting pleasure by watching them progress. Um, I actually get really excited when they boost higher or, or they learn a new trick. That's almost as exciting or actually more exciting to me than um, me getting somewhere else, um, me progressing in any way. Um, but that, you know, that, that's, a, that's a personal, uh, internal kind of choice. Um, but it, it will definitely suffer. <laughs> your progression and your time on the water will definitely suffer. The winging came along and I think it became the, the the new coolest thing to do for kids. Uh, there are some. It, it's a lot safer. There's no third dimension. Uh, you can't get lofted and, and picked up and thrown into into hard objects. Um, some of these new products that that are out on the market right now allow you to do it without foiling first. Um, so just grabbing a small wing, uh, a stand-up paddleboard, attaching subwinder fin. Kind of like a dagger board fin that's attaches to any of your old uh, stand-up paddle boards. They also have an inflatable uh, board that comes with it. Um, I think that's that's a that's a really good way to introduce your kids to wind sports. Uh, that and a trainer kite, flying a trainer kite is, is is also great and relatively safe if you're doing it on a on a empty beach. This might, might have been too serious of an interview, and it is, teaching your kids is a serious matter, but I can't overstate it enough how important it is to just have fun. Um, for your kids to have fun, and for you to, to have fun doing it. Ten. Marcel, how old are you? 10. And what would you say is your major motivation for learning how to kiteboard? Um, watching my brother kiteboard and progress. Jacob, what has been your motivation for learning how to kiteboard? Watching others. I like to watch people who even ride here they jump high or do loops, which is something I can't really do. And I kind of want to do it going higher. I am happy that my, that my dad committed the time to teaching me through how many years it took me to learn. Even if I never, if if I didn't feel like doing it, he'd still commit me to doing it and actually make it sound like fun. And it became extremely fun. <laughs>